Hello and Happy New Year. Today's episode number 72 of the Professor Slots podcast discusses income tax gambling deductions. But remember, I'm not an income tax professional. Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. federal district of the District of Columbia. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over who benefits from casino rewards programs from my Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed Delaware slot machine casino gambling in 2019. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from 2 p.m. until 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy-to-remember link to my YouTube channel is professorslots.com slash live. Feel free to stop by any time during my hour-long Q&A. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live Q&A session on getting ready for your tax gambling deductions. Okay, everybody, it looks like we're all set up to go. I'm waiting for the image to appear, 20-second delay, as usual, and we are good to go on Facebook and YouTube. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, it's always nice to see myself 20 seconds ago. Um, happy New Year. I wanted to wish everybody a happy new year, um, and I hope that 2020 is uh, going to be great for you. So today we're going to, um, let me quickly check, we have a healthy stream. If anybody wants to confirm they can see me, that would be awesome. I think we're okay. It's always uh, fun to make sure that it works. Um, let me make sure the volume's good enough here. Dum dum dum. Okay. Right. Uh, right. So, uh, welcome everybody to uh, 2020. Hey, Steve. Um, great minds think alike. I was also thinking about, you know, tax season is still a few months away, but. Uh, 2019 is put away. <laughs> Thanks, Lois and Dave, for uh, confirmation. Um, excellent. Yeah, uh, there's either been one thing or another uh, on, on doing this live, uh, and it's been interesting sort of working through the issues. Um, and I think I've done all my checks. So, uh, so I thought it would be a good time and uh, Steve thought it would be a good time too. I was just uh, putting together the new thumbnail uh, with a title for today's topic, and uh, it seemed like gambling deductions would be an excellent topic. Uh, I'm not going to cop out on sharing what I know, but I do have to say I am not a tax income tax professional. Um, so there are some things which um, I mean everything has to be checked for your circumstances. Uh, there's a lot of different states out there and a lot of different countries out there. Uh, you know, this is worldwide what I'm trying to do here. So although there's certainly an emphasis on the U.S. Uh, or at least English speaking countries um, for now, but there is a lot of tax law out there and things need to be checked and everybody's circumstances are a little bit different. Not to just not to mention state law. I mean, my federal, the, the U.S., the federal income tax laws that apply to me apply to you, um, uh, you know, with whatever distance, the differences exist, like the U.S. does allow gambling deductions at the federal level. Uh, we'll get into uh, some of the ins and outs of that because it's uh, some detail there that's, that matters. Like you can only deduct up to, up to what you win, which for many people who have never gotten a W-2G, um, tax hand payout, um, uh, income tax automatically deducted hand payout, uh, then 
you know, how much does that apply? Uh, but we'll t we've talked a little bit in the past about being a professional gambler and how is that possible? Uh, and that's a different type of tax, income tax form, uh, where you have a profession as a gambler. And some of you, even though you're slots enthusiasts, uh, would be that because you've been grandfathered in. I've met people who have, uh, but anybody new trying to do that has a burden, uh, definitely a high bar to overcome as we've discussed in the past prior episodes. I want to give a great shout out to the podcast uh, listeners uh, who will be listening to this in the future. Um, welcome, future listeners. Um, and uh, so there won't be too many visuals, too many slides that I'll be showing today, probably none, um, unless I have a specific question. Um, hey, Phil AT, happy new year to you as well. Uh, first thing I, I, I said, um, but it won't be the last time I say it uh, today. Right. So let's get into this, uh, jump right in uh, and talk about, let's see, health looks good. Stream looks good, um, and, we're, and we're a minute and a half in. Uh, don't want to go too long, much longer on that for as an introduction. Um, so, let's talk about gambling deductions. Uh, that was a complete shock to me. I mean, just personally telling you my story. Uh, I I had um, in two thousand four my first hand pay. Uh, I got. Was it 13 hand pays that year? Uh, most of them, or is it all of them? Uh, I've written, it's in my book. Um, all within six days on a slot machine that had been set up to win, obviously been set up to win. It had a view of an open area of the casino, and I put $500 in, and it never ran out for six days. On the seventh day, I put $500 in at per usual, and it was gone in like five, six minutes. And I was like, what just happened? Because all the other times, um, I was just winning money, winning money, winning money. It was a $1 five credit, uh, five times play machine, which I still have a fondness for. Um, and first hand pay, second hand pay, third hand pay. Uh, and it ended up being just under 20, it's, I think it was $28,600 in hand pays in six days, 13 of them. Uh, and I, was a graduate student, engineering graduate student at the time, and I just kept records because that's what you do with data <laughs> and not knowing any better or any worse. And so the next year, uh, bringing this around to tax and gambling deductions, I took, I went and had, I was having my taxes prepared in a little town uh, in Iowa, Ames, Iowa, uh, and uh, a professional tax service. Uh, not that I was, I was, I was, I was making, what was it? I think I was up to 12,000. Yeah, 12,000 at that point per year. Uh, graduate student, uh, excellent slave labor. <laughs> Anything technical you want for, for bo rock bottom prices. Um, so that's what I was living on called a stipend. And then I had, just about three times that uh, in gambling income. Uh, kept about a third of that, uh, 30000 uh, and had in cash. Uh, and, you know, so that was a 130% payout return overall. Uh, but I, I was just playing, you know, and uh, – but I kept records. How much money did I take on each day? Which machine was I playing? Which casino was I playing at? What day was that? And that'll become important later because that qualifies as gambling records according to the IRS. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, because I went to the tax guy and gave him my usual stuff, including the W2Gs, the 13 W2Gs. And he says, you've been winning money gambling. Uh, and I, I almost have the conversation down word for word in my book, but it's been a few years. And um, yeah, uh, so might as well plug the book, right? This is my book. Uh, learning to win, how to make a profit at slot machine gambling. It uh, starts with my story uh, back in 2004 and then jumps to 2000, 
2013, the end of 2013, uh, when my nine months of winning 90 taxable jackpots uh, occurred and then winning the car. Um, but uh, going so uh, that's on, available on Amazon as an ebook um, and a paperback, uh, shortly as an audiobook. I'm working on that. Still a lot of editing to do. Um, but uh, if you uh, if you you know take all that stuff to your tax preparer, income tax preparer, uh, he might ask you, "Do you have records showing how much money you took you took into the casino?" Which seemed like a bizarre request. Um, uh, First time gambling, right? First year gambling for me. And I said, well, actually, yes, I, I did write all that down. Um, he's like, well, I think the question was, uh, how much money did you take in? I said, on that first day, I took in $500, um, which was a lot for me and still is. But uh, And he said, and the second day? I said, well, I took in some of my winnings from the previous day. How much was that? I don't remember, but I wrote it down. And he's like, "Hey, I'll 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 work on this. Why don't you go get that?" I'm like, "Okay, if you want me to." <laughs> and <laughs> you're sensing a little bit of um, my being naive. Uh, it's certainly true. <laughs> so I went and got that, and I came back, and he began to explain that you can deduct up to your winnings. One thing that a lot of people don't do is have winnings. Uh, by, and tech, and usually, uh, what thoughts players are saying is a W2G hand pay, the, the IRS tax form the casino gives you, for those who don't know, uh, if you win $1,200 or more. Uh, and the taxes are automatically deducted. Usually it's optional for federal and not optional for state, uh, or city, uh, assuming that the state or city has uh, an income tax like Nevada doesn't. Um, and so you uh, have paid taxes. Sometimes you can't get out of it. Sometimes you can. And what you'd like to do is see what the rules are and get those taxes back. It can be significant. 25% on federal. Uh, you know, if what are the rules? And one of the rules is you can deduct up to your winnings. And so if you get a uh, 12 Hundred dollar one taxable jackpot for the minimum amount one thousand two hundred dollars, hand pay, and for some reason you chose to let federal taxes be taken out, and let's say there was no city or state, then uh, you had twenty five percent or so taken out. You can actually tell them how much, uh, and let's say it was twenty five percent. So, what? Doing math in my head uh, is too much for me, uh, doing all this other stuff. Uh, right, so $300. You'd like to get that $300 back. Well, if you keep a log, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, the details of that, according to the IRS. If you keep a log, then uh, you can put that with your taxes, and you can deduct uh, if you spent Three hundred dollars that year, and some of the details are here are, are interesting here because according to the uh, website that I went through on IRS today, uh, it said you can include expenses associated with your gambling, like gas money and other stuff. I guess uh, be interesting. Like like I said, your tax preparer can confirm all of this, uh, but it's interesting to read the rules. And one of the, the biggest things here is the gambling deduction. If you spend $500 or more than $300, $300 or more, if you spend $300 or more in that same year, then you can get that $300 back. Uh, and, and that's basically your gambling deduction at the federal level. Uh, now, the details here start to get a little complicated fast. I mean, if we didn't need tax professional, income tax professionals, we wouldn't have income tax professionals. Uh, so some of the details here that I, I, I want to talk to you about uh, are, um, uh, let's start with win-loss statements. A win-loss, for those who don't know, a win-loss statement is something that the Casino Rewards Club provides you. 
you become a member of the rewards club and they will provide you something called a win loss statement. Now it's not as much of a big deal as many people think. Uh, many people think, well, it's tracking how much you win and lose. Uh, but it's more of a profit loss statement, which isn't exactly the same thing. It tells you uh, how many hand pays you have, uh, although they put some wording in the terms of conditions about not necessarily all of them, whatever that means. Uh, and they also tell you how much you spent. Uh Yeah, Uh, it tells you how much you won with hand pays and it tells you how much you won and lost with uh, non hand pays. Uh, And it doesn't tell you how much you won. It doesn't tell you how much you lost. It tells you the difference. And the IRS wants to know how much you won. And it wants to know how much you lost. It doesn't want to know the subtraction of the two. They're very clear about that. Yes, ca- yes, Catherine. Um, Catherine mentioned to me uh, maybe an hour ago how there are uh, uh, no win-loss statements available from the Oregon State Lottery. But also that Oregon State does not allow uh, gambling deductions that you would have at the federal level. So, again, every state's a little bit different. Some states don't have State income tax on income. I mean, state income tax. Uh, others don't allow gambling deductions. Like for one thing, I've always tried to be cautious with people whenever we're talking about this topic is saying, if you live in a city with city taxes, municipal taxes, local taxes, whatever you want to call them, if you live within the city limits or the limits where, of where that occurs and you suddenly start, you know, you're following some of the things I talk about as far as winning. Right. Um, and as, so, as far as you um, do the stuff that uh, you suddenly, you know, start winning because maybe you're following the stuff I suggest. I wouldn't want you to get in trouble with your taxes because you've made this huge financial change. Suddenly you're winning a lot. And if you don't prepare to have two percent, four percent set aside for your local um, I got, in, I, they, they were very helpful in my city that I happened to be in where this, all this was happening. Uh, and I was like, what do you mean I have to come up with 2% of my annual income for you to pay? What? Uh, and it was just a big surprise for me. And it took me a couple of years to make, and, make payments and get that off my uh, balance sheet with the locals, but they were very, very generous. Um, so we've got some comments going on here. Uh, no one lost statements from, uh, in Oregon, the Oregon State Lottery uh, controls the VLTs at casinos uh, and elsewhere in Oregon. And so that's, uh, there's, uh, the casino apparently doesn't, um, uh, apparently the Oregon State Lottery. Is that right? The casino? See the, Catherine, are, are, are you sure that there are no win-loss statements available from the casino you go to? I know that there's uh, rewards clubs at casinos and that should track when you play at a casino, I know Oregon has like convenience store legally has convenience store um, slot machines. And that wouldn't be, that would have to be tracked through Oregon. So again, this all gets complicated um, because one of the questions I get is, Hey, is a win loss statement enough? And uh, Steve asked that uh, earlier today and no, <laughs> even the IRS says it's, it, it's not. And we'll get to that uh, shortly. I want to check some of the chat messages here. Was told North Carolina does deduct off your winnings. Federal taxes will allow you to deduct up to your winnings. Other states allow losses? Um, uh, sure, lots of other states allow losses. And I don't know if it's yours or not. So that's 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 the reason why you need to go to a tax preparer. One of the reasons you need to go to an income tax preparer who knows who knows tax law for your state, also knows your tax bracket and knows your situation. Um, and that's who you need to work with. I, ca- I can't provide the necessary details, but I do want you to know uh, there are some straightforward things at the federal level, that, and I'll pull up some websites shortly. They're in the uh, uh, description here. Um, and you'll, you'll see some of that. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, I haven't gone to any Oregon Native American casinos in a long time, so I'm not sure. Right. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, easy enough to do is, is go to any one of these casinos. Um, maybe, uh, maybe you have to log in. Maybe you don't and just, or just ask them if they have a win loss statement. Um, but what I wanted to do is go over to, uh, so a big one that might cover a lot of people, um, and I uh, would be either MGM or Caesars Entertainment. I didn't go to MGM. Uh, I'm a little more familiar with Caesars Entertainment, but I went, uh, I have a, a um, Players Rewards Club with them, of course. And when I log in, I can find something called a win loss statement, uh, selection. And there are terms and conditions, uh, that they have you agree to. And I wanted to, um, substantiate some of the stuff that I was just saying uh, and uh, about these win-loss statements, uh, both to Steve earlier and what I was just saying. Um, so basically a win-loss statement is historical gaming activity from casinos. Uh, and for Caesars, it says it would be for um, its casinos or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates that they currently own, operate, or manage. Um, let's see. And they say, I understand that the information is generated by Caesar's systems is not an, a quote, official record and does not take the place of my own gaming activity records. Caesar's makes no representation or warranty express or implied of the accuracy of the information or its effectiveness as proof of wins or losses. Uh, Right there in the terms and conditions, check your own. Um, it does say further, and I will, I check this out and we'll go over it in just a moment. For specific information on tax return preparation and IRS requirements, please consult a tax advisor. See, please, please consult a tax advisor or the IRS at www.irs.gov. Uh, that, and it goes on to say the IRS recommends that taxpayers keep their own diary of their gaming activity with such pertinent information as dates, slot machines or table numbers, jackpots, and total wins and losses. So uh, that is actually a very short statement that doesn't say everything that's actually on that site. So I provided two links in the description for this live event, uh, which uh, takes you to the two forms. And one, the, one of the first forms, it's actually it's a topic under their tax topics under help. At the, at the federal IRS, it's topic number 419. That's topic number 419, gambling income and losses. So let me read a few things. Um, so if you are not a professional gambler, this is for casual gamblers. Uh, it, and this, some of this is going to be harsh. Um, uh, I don't want to cause an argument uh, about what you think you knew about this versus what the IRS is saying. Um, this is between you and your tax preparer. Um, here we go. Ready? Gambling winnings are fully taxable and you must report the income on your tax return. Gambling winnings, not gambling winnings. Uh, this is me now talking. Gambling winnings, not gambling winnings at $1,200 or more. Gambling winnings. All right. Getting back to it, quote, gambling income includes but isn't limited to winnings from lotteries, raffles, horse races, and casinos. It includes cash winnings and the fair market value of prizes, such as cars and trips, end quote. Okay? You win a blanket. You get a free meal from the casino. What's the fair market value of that? That's taxable. And that is not on your win-loss statement. Uh, let's move to the next section, gambling winnings. Uh, two, 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 a payer is required to issue a Duff Form W2G. Uh, if you receive certain gambling winnings or have any gambling winnings subject to federal income, da da da, uh, you must report that. Da, da, da. There's other winnings. Um, you can read this for yourself. Again, it's... Um, uh, topic number 419 and in, uh, gambling income and losses uh, in the help section, uh, tax, talk, tax topics section of the federal IRS for the United States. 
and I put a link, uh, should be link number two, um, in, in, uh, the description for this show. So you may deduct gambling losses. Quote, you may deduct gambling losses only if you itemize your deductions on a Schedule A and keep a record of your winnings and losses. The amount of losses you deduct can't be more than the amount of gambling income you reported on your return. Claim your gambling losses up to the amount of winnings as other itemized deductions. End quote. Uh, another section, rec- record keeping. To deduct your losses, you must keep an accurate daily, uh, excuse me, I'll try again. To deduct your losses, you must keep an accurate diary or, or similar record of your gambling winnings and losses and be able to provide receipts, tickets, statements, or other records that show the amount of both your winnings and losses. And then it says it refers us to publication 529, miscellaneous deductions. And that's where I want to go next. So this is the third link in the description. I hope this is not too boring. Because what I'm trying to do here is, is help you get back everything that you can get back. And if you have to start a diary of your gambling, this is the time to do that. It won't help you for 2019 taxes, but it'll help you for 2020 income taxes. And, uh, particularly if you use some of my techniques to win more than you have, and now you've got to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> it's a problem to have, I guess. Uh, you must report. Okay. So I've, I've gone over to this publication, uh, 529. Um, it's, uh, came out last month or rather last updated December 2019. Uh, and if you go to the right side, excuse me, the left side and oh, gee, uh, quite a ways down, uh, um, there is something called gambling losses. In the, there's a sidebar, they call it. There's a bunch of different links, like hundreds of them. And if you go down to one of the bullet points, it says gambling losses up to the amount of gambling winnings. Uh, and then there's a bunch of sub bullets beneath that. Uh, I, I've, I've gone there. So you, that's what you're looking for. If you want to just, uh, uh, you know, search that page for gambling. I think you'll, you'll find it. Uh, but let's just quickly get through this so I can get back to the top, uh, see what your questions are. Um, yeah, there's been some stuff going on. Uh, you must report the full amount of your gambling winnings for the year and your schedule, blah, blah, blah. Gambling losses include the actual cost of wagers plus expenses incurred in connection with the contact conduct of the gambling activity, such as travel to and from a casino. Hey, get to, didn't know that, did you? Deduct your uh, travel expenses. Um, you can't deduct gambling losses that are more than your winnings. Uh, and you can't reduce your gambling winnings by your gambling losses and report the difference. See, that's what the win-loss statement does uh, in part. Uh, it also provides a hand pays. Um, but you see, the IRS doesn't want the difference. Um, but on the other hand, they go on to say that uh, your records, there's a um, proof of winnings and losses section here. In addition to your uh, diary, you should also have other documentation. You can generally prove your winnings and losses through your W2G, certain gambling winnings form, da, 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 uh, receiving gambling, uh, let's see, right, wagering tickets, cancel checks, substitute checks, credit records, bank withdrawals, and statements of actual winnings or payment slips provided to you by the gambling establishment. So while the win-loss statement isn't what you need to do the best at your record keeping for gambling deductions, the IRS says, yeah, that would be great to have that too. Uh, Okay, so let's get back to how the questions have been going. Um... Uh, do states allow what you lose on lottery tickets and scratch offs as a deduction on the gambling losses? Hey, yeah. I mean, it, in my opinion, well, actually, it's not my opinion. It says right there on the IRS, uh, raffles. Let's see. Uh, gambling income includes, but is not limited to winnings from lotteries, raffles, horse races, and casinos. That's under the topic number 419. So to answer your question uh, there, uh, Richard, wise, vir- wise virgin, uh, yeah, uh, lotteries. Uh, Catherine, I haven't gone to any Oregon na- native. Yep. 
we did that one. Uh, I use a calendar and a cell phone to keep uh, somewhat of a record. Um, one of the conversations I've had with people has been, um, you know, is there, do you, do you guys keep gambling records? I mean, uh, how hard is that? Um, I mean, I, I seriously, uh, I, I can't imagine everybody has a spreadsheet software. Um, I can imagine losing a notebook over the course of a year stuffed in the back seat, you know, or, or, or some other way. Um, how, how easy, how hard, uh, is it? Do, do you want a gambling app that would record that for you? I, I don't know. There's maybe privacy concerns there. Um, I think that, Steve's got it right. I think more and more people are using smart devices and starting a notebook file on your phone uh, would be a way to do that uh, on your laptop with, um, uh, you know, a, a spreadsheet and everything in between. Uh the article, the link number one in the description is a article that I wrote. Um, I want to make sure I get the name right here. Uh, Keeping gambling records for tax preparation and more. And one of the things I talk about here is, uh, um, you know, there's income tax and then there's doing better at gambling. So, Everybody's going to have income taxes, um, or at least have to make sure they don't have income taxes or, or, or what, or some aspect of that. But there's also the advantage play. You know, people here, uh, I think you've all been aware of my t- discussing what I'm doing is advantage plays. It's taking advantage of business practices of casinos. And one of those things is for us to keep records and look for patterns in the data. I know that sounds uh, pretty geeky, pretty high end, but really uh, record I mean, for tax preparation purposes, you record the date you record. Uh, and it's all here in, in my uh, uh, article. Uh, gambling records for income tax preparation purposes is the section here that I'm looking at uh, right now uh, for minimum for minimum tax purposes. At least five entries are required. These are the date, the location, which is the unique name of the gaming property, the amount spent gambling, the amount won gambling, and any comps or the, at least the fair market value of those comps eventually have to be converted into money. Um, and how much is, you know, if you were to, you, let's say you're given a free pillow, how much would that pillow reasonably be cost in a fair market system? And that's the value you put down as income. Uh, and then if you get W2Gs and you pay taxes on those W2Gs, what for the year, what is those total income taxes you've paid at the federal level? And you get to deduct up to that amount, assuming you've spent that much. If you haven't spent that much, uh, and hopefully, hopefully you haven't. Do uh, you see what I mean? Right? You can... Spend everything that you win, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you had a profit. If you have a profit, you you won't be able to get out of you won't be able to legally get out of paying taxes on your profit. Uh, and uh, we can argue about uh, taxation uh, some other time. There's certainly enough Facebook memes out there to cover that topic. But that's the minimum, right? Date, location, amount spent, amount won. And, uh, the value of any comps, dinners, gifts, trips. Um, and one of the things that we just learned is, uh, the, the, the cost of going to the, to the, uh, the travel to the casino. Um, for instance, how much did you spend? Uh, but there's other things, uh, that you might want to record as a way to understanding whether or not that trip, um, was valuable and whether it was worth going sort of so you can watch for trends. And, and I suggest that along with those bare minimums uh, to 
write down your gross jackpot. I mean, you have that before because the W2G is documentation you'll need to keep for your, you know, it's a tax form. So you would want to have that. And I wasn't including it before, uh, on the, in the diary because you have it, a stack of them, uh, hopefully. And, uh, what I'm saying here is actually put that into the diary as well. Um, not only how much of the total jackpot was, but after taxes, how much the jackpot was, how much each taxes were, if any, was there federal, was there state, was there local? If you know, if you have federal, state, or local, then you can make an attempt to get them, get that taxes back. So knowing how much you want to try to get back is one way to move down this route. So that's several things that you can do, but it isn't actually everything that you can do um, because uh, if you want to understand, you know, to to go further and dig into patterns, uh, why don't you write down the time that you want a jackpot? Uh, and IRS does say write down the serial number of the slot machine, although that, too, is on your W2G. If you didn't know that, there's a unique identifier that's serial number um, on the tax form as well. But I'm saying put it in your diary as well. So that you can say, you know, I want a lot on that machine and not a lot on that machine. And maybe I should play this one more and not that one as much. Uh, and then a comment section. So you can write down any sort of remarks about oddities and other things you've seen. Good on a Tuesday, bad on a Thursday, something. Um, and, uh, and th- then I also say one last thing would be, was there an event at the casino? Uh, and this way you can start looking into some of the winning strategies that I talk about um, and, and, you know, doing your income tax preparation, but doing uh, a little bit more than that to help you win more. Let's see. Uh, Steve says uh, he uses a calendar and a cell phone to keep what somewhat of a record. Uh, he says, I want to mention that even though you can deduct your winnings, that still goes on your local income tax caps, which in my case brought me to a much higher income tax bracket. Yes. Uh, didn't want to scare people. Um, you know, some people uh, have told me that they don't pay taxes because their income is less than that, uh, less than the minimum requirement. But if you win, oh, a $3,000 jackpot. And this applies to a lot of different circumstances. If you win a $3,000 jackpot, suddenly you have to pay taxes. This is not a good thing for Canadian visitors who like to go to Florida. Lois, Dave, are you still there? <laughs> um, there is a limit to how much income they can have in a foreign country. And, uh, you know, then there's people who don't have to pay taxes and now they do have to pay taxes because they're below the income, right? Retirees, right? Uh, uh, perhaps. Um, then you have, then you have like, you're not in the top tax, top tax bracket. Uh, you know, I, I won over a hundred K. If I wasn't previously in the top tax bracket, I was suddenly in the top, ta- top tax bracket. Imagine this, okay? Imagine I'm making a certain amount of money on my day job, okay? And then because of my W2Gs in excess of $100,000 in a year, which I started earning in the middle of November for that nine months of 90 taxable jackpots, 52 of them were in that in that six weeks. Uh they estimate with your day job how much taxes to take out based on your tax bracket from what your annual gross is expected to be. Okay. So suddenly middle of November through the end of the year. Okay. Thanks Lois and Dave. Uh, from middle of November through the end of the year, I make a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, taxable. W2G stuff taxable. That threw, that threw me into a different tax bracket and I had 10 and a half months of not paying enough in taxes for my day job because suddenly I'm in another tax bracket. Well, you know, 
be careful with those. That's one of the, my concerns. I help, if I help people to win, if I help enough people to win, this is going to be a problem for them. They're going to be like, oh, so I won it. And that's it. I'm like, no, you also went up to in a tax bracket or maybe all of them. And, uh, you know, there are consequences to winning and um, being prepared. So this is, is part of this. Keeping good, uh, uh, keep, keeping a good diary will help you mitigate that effect. Being aware whether your local city municipality has income taxes uh, that apply to you and if they accept gambling deductions and most don't, that's important to know. And what about your state? So um, these are all important considerations and you need to talk to a tax preparer because all I can do is just point out some of these possibilities and see, you need to see where your tax bracket is at. You need to, you know, talk to your tax preparer and, and make sure your particular circumstance, um, that you're protected. Uh, please be protected. Uh, Let's see. Philly T, how does casino credit usage affect taxes? Um, I assume that you mean that you went in to get a um, credit line or went to an ATM and withdrew from your credit uh, card. Uh, that's not income. You may have used the casino ATM. You may u- have used the casino uh, cashier's cage, but it wasn't until you spent it gambling or won something by spending it gambling, that it becomes something that the IRS is interested in. Uh, what else can I tell you here? Um, a minor little detail. Uh, if you have $10,000 in cash uh, that you win and you take it to a bank to deposit it, there's a national service that asks for a report of any such thing because it's looking into mon- money laundering. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, so it's looking in the muddy laundering. Um, uh, so, Philly T, uh, if you have a credit line, uh, that's really a convenience thing. Uh, that's where someone might go, you know, instead of traveling, let's say you want to go to a different state. Uh, you want to fly to Nevada and you want to play um, table games, slot machines, whatever, and you want to take a certain amount of money, a significant amount of money, uh, you want to play that, have that available to you and perhaps play it. And you don't want to go through TSA and, you know, airport facilities with that kind of cash on you. And you, you know, your, maybe your bank doesn't service Las Vegas. Uh, so you can't do withdrawal and, um, you know, you have a daily limit on ATM withdrawals. So what's the solution here? And basically, um, doing a wire transfer to get a credit line, uh, through, the, um, and please don't use this for, you know, please only use this for good. Um, you can get a credit line if you have credit. You can get a credit line so that you can have money to gamble with at a casino if, you know, it's more than a few hundred dollars because you can carry a few hundred dollars, but you can't carry $10,000 or $20,000, not easily and perhaps not wisely. So what people do is they get a credit line, but that's only a credit line. You know, how interested is it is the IRS when you get a bank loan? You know, when you get, uh, uh, you know, buy a car and use credit, you know, not very. Uh, but if you spend it, then uh, gambling, then keep a record of it. Uh, and that is, uh, and, and you can also, you know, if, if you get audited and they come to you and they say, we don't know that you actually did, you know, do you have any proof that you actually spent that much money? Uh, and, uh, and one of the things you can do is provide the credit line documentation saying, well, you know, with this W, with, with, you know, that I, I actually did spend this much money because here's my credit line that I pulled. You know, it's like the win loss statement. It is not definitive, but it, it provides additional proof that what you say in your diary happened actually happened. Uh, and, you know, you can have your bank statements and other things you can provide to the IRS as uh, during an audit. And all these things can, you know, provide if not proof, then uh, support for the, uh, you know, story, um, the, the record that you uh, say, say you kept. Because I've had people come to me and, and, and say, well, 
uh, uh, you know, what, and I, I do not recommend messing around with the IRS, uh, death and taxes, right? Let's not do that. But I've had people come to me and say, well, what you can do is you can go over to the paramutual, the horse racetrack, and there's all these many slips that people just drop to the floor from their bet when they lose. They just throw them away on the ground. You can take a, take a shovel and pick all those up and take a moment and say, this is my record of how much I spent, you know, and it could be $10,000. All right. Do you have a, you know, bank statement saying you withdrew $10,000 the day or the week before? You know, the IRS can <laughs> figure stuff out. And, uh, that's, that's one of the things, um, you want to, you know, be careful about. Don't, I, I will talk to your tax professional. Do it right. That's my advice. Uh, how else, uh, let's see. We don't seem to have any problems with the stream health and, uh, we're, what other questions do you have about tax preparation? Um, if you get my book, there are several, um, and let me jump to one of these. Dun, 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 dun. Flip through it. And towards the end of one of these chapters should be, ah, uh, chapter 10, useful gambling tools. Figure 10 dash two. I'll see if I can hold it up here and wait 15 seconds until it appears and you can see what that looks like. This is the, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, Five different things. The last one is comps. Uh, and yeah, you can sort of see it. Uh, and if you, you know, that's what you need to keep track of. Um, I have another p two forms in the next page over. I will hold it up now and you might be able to see that. And there's a lot more information, but this is where you're getting into a financial analysis, uh, where you're trying to keep records of, of, um, what you want to do. And sometimes what I do is, uh, one of the practical considerations is that if you get free stuff, uh, a lot of free stuff, a lot of free stuff, I keep my own, ta I, I keep a separate table. Um, uh, just, you know, this meal, that meal, this thing, that thing, toaster, microwave, da, 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 trip, 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 cruise, cruise, cruise. I mean, when I went on the cruise, there was, Airfare, there was, um, uh, you know, the, all the fees, they, they took $500 off on the cruise that I was on and the rest of the fees were on me. Docking fees, this fee, that fee, um, you know, the, uh, the excursions, you know, this was, this was, uh, what did I spend at the casino? You know, I had to make a decision about which one, of, which of these were comps and which one of these, you know, were, where I was paying, but, you know, Hmm, you know, wh wh how do all these fall out? And sometimes if you put them next to your casino trips, you, you really need a, like a separate table for comps because like I've said before, you have like a whole room of them. Um, right. Uh, uh, Catherine says, tell them the name of your book. She has, um, learning to win. Now hold it up now. Uh, it's called learning to win available from Amazon. Uh, is there an easy way for me to maybe get that for you? Uh, you can look it up yourself, but I can also do it for you here. Um, so, you know, take a moment. Uh, think about uh, what you're trying to, um, you know, accomplish. Do you need to keep gambling records? Because, you know, that's a question that I people ask me, and I, and I say to everybody, uh, Yes, actually, you do uh, need to keep gambling records. Um, and they're like, but I've never had a W-2G. And my response to that is, you haven't had a W-2G yet. What if you get one, you know, uh, five days ago? What if you got one five days ago? Uh, then what are you going to do then? You know, you, you didn't, let's say you didn't keep gambling records for the full year and you won that, um, 
uh, there's Oklahoma had a $408,000 uh, um, uh, progressive win. Let's see, get link. That's what I wanted. Um, you get, you know, what if you won a $400,000, $408,000 uh, uh W2G taxable jackpot from a progressive slot machine um, on the last day of the year. I put the link to Amazon for the book uh, into the chat, live chat. Uh, what if you won that much money? Well, let's say you've been gambling the whole year, but you, you've lost. You just, you know, you spent an unknown amount of money. Well, that $408,000 is going to have taxes. That'll have taxes. And you could get some of those taxes back if you kept a record for the year. You don't know how the year is going to go. Start start your diary now. Get a little practice in. Write down how much you spent in case you win big. Uh, let's see. Um, Bill Frazier to uh, tax reform law deals pro gamblers a losing hand. Yeah. Um, Right. Uh, there's an article in the Journal of Accountancy of, of October 1st, 2018, uh, for professional gamblers. Um, yeah, I'm not advocating people become a, uh, um, become a professional gambler. They're, uh, they're, I never saw the benefit. I mean, I, I have justification. I would be automatically audited trying to become a professional gambler because I say I'm doing it with slots and that's not possible. Everybody knows that. And you have to write, have written, oh, I don't know, a book and how to, you know, do it in order for a judge to find, find things my way. I wrote the book and I have all that. And I'm just like, I still don't want to mention, be, you know, I don't want to do this professional gambling thing because I don't, I don't see an advantage. It would be a bragging point, I guess, but then I'd be kind of stuck with it. Um, I, I have no need, uh, to have that, uh, status. <sighs> uh, thank you, Lois and Dave. Um, my dad has just stopped by to see the end of the show. Um, Hi, Dad. Um, uh, it's always nice to have family here. I've had coworkers here and family here, uh, and um, that's that's wonderful. Okay, so uh, I think I've covered all the different points I wanted to make. Uh, it is early in the year. Now is the time to start a diary so that you can uh, get as much back as possible from your uh, taxes in uh, for 2020 when you do your taxes in 2021. Now, do this diary. Don't take my word for it. You're going to be doing your taxes and maybe you're going to see an income tax professional in a few months or soon, whenever. Go confirm with them. Uh, go confirm with them that, uh, you, you have what you need in your diary. Uh, you know, this, this is some assurance that you can have. Uh, and then you don't lose the diary. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, uh, yeah, Bill, I just saw it as I, I looked through all the different ways, you know, what would be necessary, even if it wasn't for slots, let's say it was for poker, you know, being a professional poker player or something like that. I look through it and I'm like, I barely see a reason why I might want to do this for, I just, I'm already fairly well covered. And, you know, with having a good uh, a diary, uh, my record keeping for, for gambling. And I'm like, uh, I, I just don't see the cost benefit. And, um, there are some, there are some, but, but, uh, and, and I just found, I, I just thought it would be hard to, uh, maintain it, to keep it. And if you messed up, it's a bit of a problem. You can lose the status and then what do you do? And, and I'm, I'm just like, I, I'm fine as is. Uh, treat myself as a personal gambler. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't even consider it a business expense, even though I have this business. I, I see it as a hobby. Uh, and, uh, it, it's very little difference 
you know, I don't mean to talk out of school. I don't mean to talk about my own personal income taxes, but I, I just don't like making it complicated. Uh, it confuses too many people. And I don't like it when the IRS gets confused. Uh, questions. Uh, I'm a little surprised nobody got really upset with you win $200 and you spend $200 and you win $200 and you spend $200 and that's $400 in gambling income and $400 in gambling uh, uh, expenses. Uh, you know, there's, if you're a high limit, uh, I, I don't want to intrude. I, I don't want to get anybody on the record. Uh, you know, if you win a thousand dollars, spend a thousand dollars, win a thousand dollars, spend a thousand dollars as you play a high limit slot machine, where's the record? You know, how do you, it, it, IRS seems to be suggesting that every one of those thousand dollars was income. In which case, you know, if you counted the points for a high limit, uh, you know, I got to $875,000 worth of Royal uh, Rewards Club points in a month and a half. And I got a little concerned because I hadn't gambled at that level for the previous year. And I wasn't sure what was going to go on with the taxes. And I was like, a month and a half, fine. Whatever happens, I should be able to get through this next tax period. But if I, you know, done that for 12 months, what is that? $10 million? Gah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, would the IRS want 25% of that? Where would I have that at? $1,000, spend $1,000, $1,000, spend $1,000. Where's, where's the 25% every time? Uh, so, um, but not most people that I work with here, um, uh, and, here are not high limit gamblers. Some, some, a few are, but mostly they're not. And that's what I'm trying to focus on. So one of the things I wanted to mention is that it's 2020. Uh, and I have apparently got my toe holes, toe holds, toe holds and finger fingers jammed into the, the cliff of having a business. So I'm climbing a cliff and I have a business. And before I was like, well, I could have a business. We'll have to see if I get enough people, but now I have enough people. So one of the things uh, that I want to mention is if you have questions uh, that I'm available for consultation, uh, professor slots.com. I'll write this in professor slots.com slash consult. Now uh, at the moment, send me an email and I'll do my best to answer it. But more and more people are doing that, and there will come a day, and it will be this year, when I will be giving shorter and shorter answers on the email. But if you want 50 minutes of my time devoted one-on-one -on -one to you, professorslots.com slash consult, uh, and it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's, it's as inexpensive as I can make it for my time, uh, and as I grow, the cost will go up. That's what happens and there's limited limited availability starting to sound like an ad but limited availability each week and one-on-one -on -one conversation we could talk about what state you're in tribal casinos commercial casinos and go through everything uh, and winning strategies and whatever you want to talk about to try to uh, look at your particular circumstances and help you uh, and I'm available for that. Uh, Steve, I just have to add, just be aware of the end of the year tax consequences as far as going into a different tax bracket. It cost me dearly. Again, thanks, John. Yeah, it, it, it cost me dearly too, but I began to realize that, um, my personal finances were undergoing a seismic shift because of 90 taxable jackpots in nine months of which First 50 were in a month and a half and the rest were the next year. And then I want a car and I was just going through all this going, 
you know, I, maybe I should just wait and see how the taxes are going to work out to see how this is going to go. And that's uh, what I did. And it was a burden. Uh, and the thing that hurt me the most, Steve, was the local taxes. And uh, I was like, what do you mean you don't accept gambling deductions? Well, we don't accept gambling deductions. And so I'm like, uh, well, how much is that? And they told me, you know, three, four thousand dollars. And I uh, came up with it uh, over time. Uh, in the next year, of course, I had that much more again and still paying on the first one, but they were very generous and they just let me keep paying. And eventually I got, got all that done. And then I moved out of the city. <laughs> um, uh, Barney, hi. Uh, Oklahoma taxes upon gross no deductions for the occasional, uh, gambler professionals should be able to, uh, report the losses. This is a major dollar amount. It is a major dollar amount, um, uh, particularly for the professionals because the, you know, they're, they're, they have larger amounts. The casual gambler might be a hundred dollars per trip or something to the casino. And, but maybe there's a, you know, a hundred trips. So again, $10,000, uh, taxes on $10,000, $2,500 for 25% for federal level. You know, that's all. That's all important. Uh, you know, if you can get that back, you know, consider it the cost of, you know, pay for going to, uh, Office Max or other place where they have, um, diaries and, uh, you know, just get a calendar and put in where you went, what you played, how much you won, uh, comps, uh, in your little calendar, keep it for the year. That's worth $2,500, right? Pays for that. Um, uh, anyway, that's how it works. Thanks, everybody. Um, have a great day. Happy New Year. And uh, have fun. Be safe. Make good choices. Bye. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Up next is the second segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing, by far, anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is District of Columbia Slot Machine Casino Gambling in 2019. Here goes. District of Columbia Slot Machine Casino Gambling does not exist. This federal district, the capital of the United States, has no casinos and, therefore, no slot machines. Washington, D.C. does have a well-respected lottery. The minimum legal gambling age in the District of Columbia depends upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, poker rooms, and paramutual wagering, it's not available. For bingo and the lottery, it's 18. Purchasers of lottery tickets must be 18 years of age or older. However, a person under 18 may receive a lottery ticket as a gift and be paid a lottery prize. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. federal district and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. In the District of Columbia, it is legal to privately own slot machines manufactured before 1952, if intended for exhibition or private use by the owner and not for gambling purposes. The District of Columbia's Gaming Control Commission is the Office of Lottery and Gaming, OLG. Legalized in 1982, the D.C. Lottery pays out more than 50% of annual sales in prize money, totaling $3 billion since 1982. The Sports Wagering Lottery Amendment Act of 2018 legalized sports wagering in the District of Columbia. After review, it became law on May 3, 2019. The rules governing sports wagering in D.C. became publicly available on August 30, 2019 in the District of Columbia Register. In this section, I'll discuss District of Columbia gambling establishments. No commercial casinos with slot machines exist in the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia has no federally recognized American Indian tribes and, therefore, no tribal casinos. As an alternative to enjoying District of Columbia slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering the District of Columbia is, to the northeast, northwest, and southeast, Maryland and to the Southwest, Virginia. To visit any of my articles in these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com, followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Maryland Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash MD. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in the District of Columbia? 
If so, join our District of Columbia Slots community on Facebook at professorslots.com slash FBDC. All you will need is a Facebook profile to join this private Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near the District of Columbia. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash FBDC. Join us. There are no casinos in the District of Columbia. Therefore, no theoretical payout limits or actual return statistics exist. The OLG states it will provide monthly sports betting statistics. In summary, District of Columbia slot machine casino gambling does not exist in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. However, as of 2019, legal sports betting has arrived. Relatively nearby casinos exist in the neighboring state of Maryland. Virginia, the other bordering state to D.C., will have casinos soon to offer as well. In the last year, the District of Columbia has changed the name of the D.C. Lottery. It was the Office of Lottery and Charitable Games, but is now the Office of Lottery and Gaming. This change indicated the arrival of legal sports betting to D.C. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another live Q&A session. To suggest a topic or ask a question which might end up as a blog article or on a podcast episode, email it to john at professorslots.com where john is spelled J-O-N. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of Florida. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are now available within most podcast apps, but are also available on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 72. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye. Bye.